My LCD here would be x plus 2. I don't need another one because it's already covered here, and this is not a fraction, so I don't have a denominator. So I'm going to multiply everything, including the 1, so every little piece of your equation gets multiplied by that common denominator. Well, that's wonderful. Those cancel. That's just x plus 3. 1 times x plus 2 is just going to give you x plus 2. Now these will cancel that subtraction. Be careful with it every single time. This is minus x and this is minus 1. So now we've got x plus 3 is equal to x minus x is just gone. 2 minus 1 is just 1. So I'm going to subtract 3 on both sides. So this is x is equal to negative 2. You think everything is wonderful and everything great and this is the answer. But what happens with negative 2 if you look back at that denominator? It makes the denominator equal to 0. So that's no good. So your answer here would be no solution. Now if you just have a single fraction equal to another single fraction, you can use essentially a shortcut method of cross multiplication. So if you remember what cross multiplication means, that means multiplying the two that are diagonal across from each other and then setting them equal to each other. So in this case, 30 is equal to 30. So how does this work when you have a rational expression? Again, it only works when you have just one fraction equal to another fraction. This is 6 times x plus 2 is equal to 7 times x minus 5. So again, you multiply diagonally. So this is 6x plus 12 is equal to 7x minus 35. So I'm going to subtract 12 on both sides. 6x is equal to 7x minus 47. I'm going to subtract 7x. Negative x is equal to negative 47. So if we divide by negative 1, we get x is equal to 47. It doesn't cause my denominator to be equal to 0, so I know that is my solution. I want you to try both types on your own. When you're ready, hit play to check your answer. So this first one, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. This is going to be factored in x minus 3, x plus 2. So my LCD here is going to be x minus 3, excuse me, and then x plus 2. I'm going to multiply every little piece of my equation by x minus 3, x plus 2. x minus 3, x plus 2. The x plus 2's cancel, so 7 times x minus 3 would be 7x minus 21. These cancel. Negative 4 is going to be negative 4x and then minus 8. The whole thing cancels over here, so that's minus 14. So this is going to give me 3x, and this is 21 minus 8 is minus 29 is equal to negative 14. We'll add 29 to both sides, so we get 3x is equal to 15. We'll divide by 3. x is equal to 5. That will not cause the denominator to be equal to 0, so that is my solution. Here I'm going to use cross multiplication. This is 5 times n plus 1 is equal to 3 times n minus 3. So this is 5n plus 5 is equal to 3n minus 9. I'll move the 3n over first. 2n plus 5 is equal to negative 9. Subtract 5, 2n is equal to negative 14. So my final solution here would be n is equal to negative 7, which does not cause the denominator to be equal to 0. Now let's talk about direct, inverse, and joint variation. Direct variation means that as something increases, the other something also increases. Or as something decreases, the other something also decreases. So essentially they match up. Inverse variation is the opposite. So as something increases, something else decreases. As x increases, y decreases. Now the equation for direct variation is y equals something times x. The equation for inverse variation that I like to use is y is equal to that something divided by x. Now joint variation essentially just involves two or more quantities of something. So you're going to have that extra variable involved in the problem. You don't have to worry about in this class combined variation. Now can you identify these in terms of a real world scenario? So direct, an example would be the number of dollars I make varies directly with how much I work. As one goes up, the other one goes up. 
or the length of the side of a square varies directly with the perimeter. Again, as the length goes up, then the perimeter is also going to go up. Inverse would be something like the temperature in my house varies indirectly with the amount of time the air condition is running. So as the air condition runs longer and longer, the temperature in my house is actually going down. So notice those are opposites. Or my GPA may vary directly inversely with the number of hours of TV I watch. So as I watch more TV, my GPA may go down because I'm not studying for my classes. So let's look at an example. In a factory, 10 men can do a job in 30 days. In the same factory, 20 men can do the job in 15 days. Is this direct, inverse, or joint? Now, it's not joint because it only involves two variables, men and days. If there was something else involved, then it would be joint variation. So the question you're asking yourself is, as the number of men went up, did the days go up too or did the days go down? So notice the days went down. Men went up, days went down. So those are opposites of each other. So this would be an inverse relationship here. A rock that weighs 120 pounds weighs 20 pounds on the surface of the moon. Similarly, an astronaut weighs 240 pounds on Earth will weigh 40 pounds on the moon. Is this an example of direct inverse or joint? Now, it's not joint because all we're dealing with is Earth and moon here. There's not another variable. Now, the Earth weight went up. What happened to the moon weight? It also went up. So since up and up, up and up, this is an example of direct variation. There are some problems in which you will have to rewrite formulas in this unit. So that's just essentially moving some variables around to get a variable by itself. So this particular formula is to find the density of an object it is mass divided by volume. It wants you to rearrange the formula for the mass. So how would you get M by itself essentially? Since it's being divided by V, you always want to do the opposite to get the variable by itself. So we would multiply both sides by V. That would essentially eliminate it over here. So M would then be equal to V times D, or it would look a little prettier, I think, to write it as DV either way. This is the formula for finding the volume of a cylinder. And so it wants you to rearrange the formula to solve for the height. Now, whereas the other one was division, this one is all multiplication. So to get H by itself, we need to divide by whatever H is being multiplied. So that means H is equal to V divided by pi times r squared. Last but not least in this unit, um, there are a couple application problems that you're going to need to know, one of which is dealing with work. So whenever you have an equation that deals with two objects or two people that are working together, how we, re we, we write this formula is the rate of the first person written as the rate per hour. So for example, it says person A does a job in two hours. So that means they do one half of the job per hour. Or person B does a job in three hours and their rate is one third of the job per hour. And so typically what we do is we take these two people, we add them together to figure out what is the rate of them working together to do the job. So let's look at an example. Two pipes are used to fill a swimming pool. The first pipe is closed. The second pipe can fill the job in nine hours. So that means they can do one ninth of the job per hour. When the second pipe is closed, the first pipe can fill the pool in seven hours. So they do one seventh of the job per hour. How long will it take them to do it if they're both open? So it's like if we combine their powers, what fraction of the job could they do in one hour? So what we could do here is just like we've been doing before, we can find the common denominator. So it would be 63 and then also X, because keep in mind you need this denominator as well. So I'm going to multiply each fraction by my LCD. So divide here, that's going to give me 7x times 1 is just 7x. I'm going to divide here, 70, 63 divided by 7 would be 9, so this is going to be 9x. And then the x's would just cancel here, so 63 times 1 is just 63. So what I can do is I can add 7 and 9 together, so it's going to be 16x is equal to 63. I'm going to do 63 divided by 16 because it tells me it wants me to round to two decimal places. So both of the pipes working together can fill the pool um, in 
It says round two decimal places, so we'll say 3.94 hours. Do he All right, and lastly, try this problem on your own. When you're ready, hit play to check your answer. So this one involved two people, Bill, Tom, and then what happens when they work together? So that's what we set it equal to. So it says working together, they painted the fence in four hours. So we know together is going to be equal to one-fourth. Tom has painted the same fence before by himself in seven hours. So Tom is going to be one-seventh. We are looking for Bill. So he's going to be one over X. So what we need to do is come up with that LCD. So between seven and four, that would be 28. And we can't forget about X as well. So we're going to multiply each fraction by 28X. So we're going to cancel here, which is just going to leave me 28. We're going to cancel there, which 28 divided by 7 is 4. So this is going to be 4x is equal to, this is going to be 7x. So we're going to move the 4x over. 28 is equal to 3x. We're going to divide by 3. And so we're going to round our answer to one decimal place this time. So when we do 28 divided by 3, we should get 9.3 three hours by himself for Bill. All right, as always, like I said, this is a big unit. So if you have questions, make sure that you email me.